the red box, the, the colored beads that the child has become familiar in the beads there. In the golden box, there are golden bead bars. And in the black and white box are the exchange beads that we will use in the second lesson of the positive snake game. In my 10 bars, I have exactly nine 10 bars. And in the colored beads, I have the same amount of beads to make nine 10 bars. So the, gold, the snake will become a golden snake. When it's done, there won't be any remnant beads. The first beads, that, the snakes that have to be set up by the teacher, because when we put the amounts together, they should always mount add up to make number 10. So that a nice and wiggly snake for the child. It doesn't matter in which order you set the beads out. Initially the teacher needs to do it. Later on the child may do it after the child has learned to work with the black and white beads. As you can see, there's seven and three and eight and a uh, nine and one and eight and two, seven and three, nine and one, six, four, eight, two, five, five, and six, four. Let me count the snake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten beads make a ten bar. I place the ten bar next to the beads and then remove the colored beads. If you do that faithfully all the time, you should have no problems with any of the, the math snake games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me lay the 10 next to it and remove these. I'm never saying taking away. I'm not taking the beads away. It's not subtraction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Put the 10 next to it and continue counting. And you continue counting until all the sections are golden. Let the child practice for several days with it until the child is very sure of uh, working with the snake. Then, at another day, the child can be invited to build his own snake. And the teacher needs to stay to show, introduce the black and white beads. If the child has had ample practice, then the child will work setting his own or her own snake out and we are introducing the black and white beads which are the exchange beads. The same way as the beads there, one, two, three, four, five, and then interestingly enough there is a white one then there. Five and one is six, five and two is seven, five and three is eight, and five and four is nine. We don't tell that to the child but it's suddenly there for the child to learn the facts. When we start counting, we again do the same thing as we did before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we insert the counter, we put ten next to it, and we tell the child, we can break this apart. It's ten up to there, but there are three more. What are we going to do? And we let the child think for a minute. And then we come up with the idea together that we could take the three to remember that there were three left. And we move these colored ones into the container. And we have to start counting with the three that were left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the child also needs to experience that there is more than two that make the number ten. Put the 10 next to it. That's why I'm saying you need to have a discipline of doing this work to be successful with it. We count them. 
one, two, three, four, five, and put the five exchange bead next to it. And then you need to remove those beads into their places, the color beads into the red box, and the black exchange bead back in its place on the table. This is the bead we need to start counting with the bead there. Bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 10 up to here, and then how many do we have left? Let's count it and see. One, two, three, four. We have four more. This one back. Then we continue counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to here, and we have one, two, three, four, five more on the table. These, put this away, start counting with the five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it became Ten. We had no leftovers this time. Now we continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this. One, two, three, four more. Let's put four out. And we can remove these two sections. Counting again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to here. And there's one more. Now we can remove this and this. Now we have to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten up to here. And we have a three that we couldn't count yet. Right. Now we have to count all these many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten up to here, and we exchanged it. All of our beads are used up, and we made our golden snake. And I always tell the children, let's check our work. If it's the first, the easy snake that I set out or the more complex snake that they work by themselves with, we'll test and see if we did the work correctly. So we set up all the 10 bars. The child really doesn't know that they are pre-counted and it helps them to uh, establish their, their plus facts if they work with that. And I set out for the child the numbers not in an order, so they will have to really think about it. And I try to take one of each of the, the numbers so the child will have a chance to. Um, see the different combinations. Let's make 10. We have how many here? The child should be able to recognize this is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And how many more? Three more to make 10. That's, this is five. One, two, three, four, five. And how many more to make ten? One, two, three, four, five. And we get the five out of the box. Five and five make ten. We have one, two. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more that we need. Two plus eight makes ten. This is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many more? One, two, three, four. Six plus four makes ten. This is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one. Nine plus one makes ten. This is three. One, two, three. And we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I usually, when I do this work, let the child count them one more time. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I didn't do it just now because it conserves a little bit of the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have two more. And then you can count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have four. One, two, three, four. And we need one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have one. The child might say, oh, we have a nine here. That's the last one. And I would say, well, let's check out and make sure it is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten.